Right, Keith, why are we here today? Uh, we're here to celebrate, commemorate and commiserate the uh, Peterloo Massacre, which occurred in 1819. So it's the 192nd anniversary today. And we're here just trying to educate people, make them aware of the massacre itself, because I'm sure if you ask all these lovely people walking past if they were familiar with the Peterloo Massacre, the majority would say no. Why do you think it's been sort of forgotten about? Why, is, uh, why do schools not teach it? Well, we believe um, I'm part of the Peterloo Memorial Campaign, and we believe that it's been, you know, deliberately whitewashed or airbrushed, as the, the poster says, um, because you know they fear us. Uh, that, you know, we're all of a like mind. People who are part of We Are Change Manchester. Um, it's the same fight, you know, that they were fighting then that we're fighting now. We know that there's a few people who control the world, you know, as they did then. 2% of the population had the vote. 2%. That's ridiculous. But are we any better off now that we all have the vote and that? I don't think we are, because, you know, I don't know about you, but I haven't voted for years, because I know it's a wasted vote. The banks, the oil companies, etc., etc. Call it the Illuminati, if you will. Call it whatever you want. But, you know, the elite rule the world. And they're not bothered who's in power in any country, whether it be this country, America, or, you know, whatever. Just goes to show, though, doesn't it, that at a time when there was no internet or communication, working people were able to get 60,000 people into this area, and yet on a day like today, a commemoration of it, we can only get half a dozen. It's the same, it's the same with, uh, with everything. I mean, I bet John Lennon and people like that would be turning in the grave to see how connected we are mobiles, internet, social networking, you name it. And we still, as you'll be aware yourself again, how many people were in Leeds for Norman, you know, but hundreds and thousands are joining these, our heroes, this groups and British, you know, this, that, the other. Where, whereas there is a World War II veteran in prison and where is everyone, you know, handful of people again. Usual suspects, we all make jokes about it. It's a hardcore few. Don't get me wrong, via this and maybe we can put it on YouTube, Facebook, whatever might go viral and people might go, oh, you know, I didn't know about that and now I do. But, if you look at things like Woodstock, you try and do something like Woodstock now with mobiles, etc. It just won't happen. Whereas, by word of mouth, you know, in some ways, again, are we better off for all this communication than we have these days? I don't think we are. If anything, it's detrimental. Because people will, people become viewers of life itself because they think, I'm not going to go to the march, I know Keith's going to go and film it, or I'm not going to go to this because someone else will put it on YouTube. People know before going to summit, someone will be there, someone will film it, and I can watch it on YouTube. So why do anything? So we're capitulating in their laziness. It's, it's life imitating art and all that, isn't it, again, you know. So are you optimistic, Keith, for the future? I'm always optimistic. I wouldn't be here if I wasn't optimistic, to be honest. Uh, you know, these are amazing times to be alive. Again, no matter what your school of thought, if you wake up and people say that terms like that are patronising, there's no other way to put it. Look at the poem Shelley did, you know, Rise Like Lions uh, From Your Slumber or however it goes. That's what the, the poem Shelley wrote is more apparent today than it was back then. We need to wake up. We need to, you know, once you stop uh, reading the mainstream media you know I talk to people because I did media studies I talk to people and say that you're brainwashed by the media they don't like hearing that but they are now how do you talk to someone who doesn't even see the fact that they're brainwashed by the media and the thoughts are not their own and they're just reciting what they've read in the paper or saw on the TV you, 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 you're pissing in the wind and to be honest to be fair the Illuminati again if you don't want to use that term don't use it the Illuminati have always known that 13% will always get it. They'll get it bang to rights like we do. We know the people behind it, we know their addresses, we know the companies this, they're the chief executive of and how it all sits together. And the other 87% you are pissing in the wind trying to convert or convince of the uh, things that go on. I use a spa tame as a great one. You know, a spa tame was passed as a food sweetener by Searle, a company which Donald Rumsfeld sat on, you know, as the chief executive of. And they passed it with the World Health Organization. Now if you check cans of coke, lil, things like that, they all have a spa aim in it. And when they were testing them in, on lab rats, the lab rats they tested on that, the, that were pregnant, the fetuses developed cancers, tumors, 
brain problems. But why the hell has that been passed as a food thing? Donald Rumsfeld, this is corrupt as they come, you know. And again, people who are aware, awake, aware, whatever you want to call it, know all about his dealings with 9-11 and the missing trillions that was buried. But, you know, again, you, 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 you're pissing in the wind because most people haven't got a clue. Well, we're doing our best, Keith, to wake him up. Yes, we are. <laughs> Hurry up! Come on, wake, wake up! Wake up, you shower of bastards. <laughs> you know. Well, there you go, it's like using uh, swear words. People need to look around in the world, whether it's the community around them or the global, you know, geopolitics, whatever you call it. There's real problems in the world. Saying shit fuck wank bollocks is not one of them. Do you know what I mean? It really isn't. It's a bone of contention with me because people don't realise how that is like in society. It's like, oh, you've lost the argument because you use those words or because you get angry. Of course you're going to get angry. You know, we're talking about uh, Pete Lou here where people died. I, I'm, I'm involved with to do with uh, Palestine and things like that where people are dying. You know, Gaza's a concentration camp. You've got the Libyan and Syrian revolutions. We're doing nothing in this country. Yet they're doing it where they're going to get shot at, you know what I mean? Where are we going to wake up? I'm not saying you have to do anything violent, by all means, do it peacefully. But when are we all going to go down to Parliament and kick them out? They've been in a year, you know, get rid of them. Well. <laughs> the Peterloo Massacre was a peaceful demonstration about democracy and 60,000 people from the mill town surrounding Manchester places like Blakely, Crumpsall, Salford and as far afield as Middleton, Oldham and Rochdale people from those boroughs came into the city centre to what was known then as St Peter's Fields which is roughly where we're stood now and possibly why the Metrolink station is called St Peter's Square when the people came into the city centre, they were dressed in their Sunday best. This was not a rowdy rabble. This was men, women and children dressed in the Sunday best. And they come to hear people speak. Now there's a novel idea for you. When the people came together, 60,000 of them, the magistrates nearby nearby decided that, uh, that they should be silent and all the that the, uh, the people who were speaking including the raid to hunt uh, um, that the people should be arrested so the yeomanry of the guard charged the people and 15 some reports say 16 17 18 people were killed on the day itself and hundreds were injured Report, reports of the injured were never really confirmed because so many people were trampled and sabred and uh, you know that to actually work out the death toll would be quite a feat in itself but the people were charged by the yeomanry of the guard who trampled them with the horses sabred them the first victim of the day was a two-year-old child who was knocked out of his mother's arms and died trampled by the horse. Now I have a son who's nearly two years old. And believe you me, the death toll would have been a lot more than 15. In fact, it would have happened to my son. Peterloo massacre has been pretty much whitewashed and airbrushed from history. You know, if if you were to go on Market Street right now and ask a hundred people if they knew what the Peterloo massacre was, I'm pretty sure the percentage would be very low. Question to the people on the St. Peter's Square Metrolink. Put your hand up if you're aware of the Peterloo Massacre. Put your hand up if you're alive right now. <laughs> put your hand up if you're not disabled and are able to put your hand up. I think you'll find that that uh, survey is quite conclusive. <laughs>